Okay, for what we looked at last time, um, relative maximums and minimums, this function has a relative minimum here, right about there somewhere. Okay, right there. Uh, it has a relative max right here somewhere. I, right there. Uh, it doesn't have any absolute maximums or minimums because this would just keep going down here. This would just keep going up here. The way we're looking for it is we're looking for where the derivative is zero. Okay, that, that point right there, the derivative is zero. And this point up here, the derivative is zero, somewhere there. Okay, almost. Uh, you called that a critical point. A critical point is where the derivative is zero or undefined, not just where it's zero. Because if it was a sharp corner, the derivative would be undefined, but it still would be a maximum or minimum. Okay, critical point is somewhere in the interior of the, somewhere on the domain, not on an end point, somewhere in the interior of the function, the domain of the function that the derivative is undefined or zero. All right, this first part here, you would say the function is increasing. We're going to start looking at how you find where a function is increasing. You look at its derivative. Where its derivative is positive, right? The derivative is positive. You can watch either there or there. Okay, it's the slope of that line. The slope is positive all the way up to this point, and that's where it is zero. And then that's negative. So this part of the function, it's decreasing between these two x values. And then over here, it's increasing again. All right? So when you talk about a function increasing or decreasing, you're talking about the y values of the thing. All right. So, I mean, confirming this, or you started, we kind of started doing this, and we got sidetracked on making a program for, uh, <laughs> it was a good program, but we should have recorded it, I realized, but we could do that again sometime. No, let's not do it right now. <laughs> let's make a new program next week. How about that? Okay. <laughs> well, we'll see. We will see. <laughs> have a programming party. <laughs> um, no, the reason we got sidetracked is because this didn't factor, right? This thing didn't factor, so we started uh, making a program to do that, and it would have been quicker just to do it by the old-fashioned way. But now you have a program that uh, gives you the, the zeros. If you know the function, this is not the function. What have I written improperly there? It's This is the function, right? This is the derivative of the function. You look where its derivative is zero. There's a derivative. So you make it zero, and you solve for that. So you know sub in zero for f of x here, f prime of x. And then solve this thing. As far as this course goes, you don't have to... You don't have to show uh, 100 steps in finding the zeros of this. It's assumed, like as far as this co course goes, or if you're taking the AP exam, if you write a quadratic down, you, then you want to solve it. You just say what the values are. There's no steps necessary for that because it's assumed it's a grade 11 skill. Um, whether if you're factoring it, great, put the factors down. If you want to put the, if you want to put something, that's fine. But because technically you could solve this by graphing. Like if I gave you something here that was degree five the derivative would be degree 4, and the only option there is to do some really involved grade 11 if it factors. Or if it doesn't factor, the only solution would be to go to the calculator and graph it or use that solver or whatever. Okay, so it, it doesn't matter how you come up with those. But now that we have this fancy program that we made last time... What is going on here? Why doesn't it... Yeah, it did, but it seems to be completely frozen. This is very strange. Probably got to reinstall it. Probably I wrote my program and now it doesn't like it, eh? Come on. This is not good. We must pause the. Well, these are the two x values where they occur, right? If you find those values, you'd have to find the max and min. How do you find that? This isn't the max and min. So I actually wrote the... I, I could take it off here. When you, do, when you solve it this way, you get the x values. x equals 1.549, roughly. We should round it off. And the other one was negative 0.215. If you want the actual max and min, you have to sub them in 
to what? Where do you have to, where do you have to put them? Once you get these, you don't say this is the maximum. There's a there's a minimum at this value, but to find it, you need to plug it in here, right? Yeah. So sub, I don't know, call them x1 and x2 into here to get the max and min, and it's going to give you it's going to give you this value, right? And the other one that we had here, it's going to give you that value. Right, if you sub them in. So that's checking it, you know, that's confirming it analytically. Part of this course is making connections between the algebra you do and the, the graphical part. Or even just looking at the table, right? If you have that function somewhere here, um, well, if you, on the calculator, you could generate a table and look at it and just see that the values, that that's the highest they get, right? I may well still have this in here. I do. If you look at it, if you set up a table here to start at negative 1, and going by 0.1, right, and then look at the table. If you scroll through here, is that my right function? Oh, no, 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 no. What did I do wrong there? Oh, I'm not on. I see what I'm... Got to go down here to auto so it fills it out. Okay, if you scroll down here, the highest y value for that function happens at, what was it supposed to happen? Negative 0.21 or something like that. Is that right? So I mean you can you can roughly you can roughly see in there you could zoom in on it but somewhere around there is the highest y value and then they start going back down again right functions decreasing till about x is one point whatever it was five or six or something like that so then it's that's the lowest it goes there and then it comes back up again right so that's looking at it numerically look at it graphically and then confirm it with the algebra. There are some other questions for you to do here. You need to do at least some of these. Um, this one is a this one is a function that has a sharp corner. Okay, this one is a sharp corner here, so it's worth looking at the algebra and seeing if you can get it to work. If you look at the graph on here, it I think looks something like this. So there's this sharp corner there. See if you can get the algebra to work to give you the same value. This one uh, is not, you know, the domain of this one is not all real numbers. It's only some of them. Think about the domain here and then try and get the algebra to work. This is not necessarily about finding the values. I know you can find the values really quickly by graphing, which is why this is here first. But it's about trying to see if you can connect the algebra with it. This one is a piecewise function, so it's going to have where they connect to each other possibly a sharp corner and then that you can fill in afterwards I don't know if I put too many blanks in there I probably did okay and then we can talk about the end of this thing here so you you uh, work through that and then we'll talk about the mean value theorem afterwards how much time do you need to do that 20 minutes 20 minutes or so.